Hello and welcome to Poolside Repair. We're in lovely Orlando, Florida, and my name is Matt, this is Rob, and this lovely little guy right here is Dennis, <laughs> and we're gonna be working on uh, Dennis's daughter's pool today. Uh, we're gonna be installing a V-Green variable speed motor and a V-Link wireless uh, interface. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be uh, a pretty fun, fun day. Uh, tell us uh, why we're gonna be doing that today, Dennis. Okay, she currently has a single speed motor uh, that's not cost efficient. We want to replace it with the variable speed motor, uh, maybe cut her cost down to 50%. Uh, and then we have the V-Link that's going to yeah, allow you to uh, kind of control it wherever you are and uh, be able yeah. to track the you energy. You can monitor and, month to month uh, what the costs are. Yeah, it's going right. to be fun. You did yep. great, Dennis. Let's go Thank check you. out the equipment. All right, so what we have here is a single speed Hayward Super 2 pump. As you could probably hear, it's a little little loud, I mean, it's, which is normal for a single speed pump. Once we get the V-Green on there, you should notice, you know, it's much quieter. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the installation started. We're going to start to disassemble this and take some of the parts off. So we're going to have to reuse them on the new motor. So we're going to start with the diffuser. Let's just pop right off. Put this to the side. Take the weird ring. Okay, so the next step will be to remove the impeller. But before you do that, you got to stabilize the shaft. Otherwise, it's just going to keep spinning. So we're going to use a 7 16 wrench. Slide in here behind the protector. And we're going to stabilize and basically you just turn the impeller until it kind of locks in place like that. And then we'll spin the impeller off counterclockwise. The seal plate will just pop right off. No critters running around, so that's good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and take the bolts out here to get the, the motor plate. So again, we're using a 916 9 socket. All right, so we got the bolts out, so we're just gonna take the motor plate off. And it's that simple. All right, so we got the two motors side by side. Obviously, this is the old one. This is the new, uh, the V-Green. It's the 1.65. Um, you can see the interface here. The, the 2.7 has the digital uh, interface. Um, all the V-Green motors are totally enclosed and fan-cooled. So it should last a lot longer than the, uh, the old single speed. All right, so at this point, uh, we're going to start to put on some of the old parts back on the uh, new motor, uh, minus the shaft seal. You want to make sure you replace your shaft seal. Otherwise, if you try and reuse the old one, first of all, it could void the warranty, and, you know, it could let water down the shaft and ruin the motor. So, uh, you want to make sure you place that shaft seal. All right, so I, got, I slid the, uh, the motor uh, mounting plate on, and on the Hayward Super 2, there is a top and a bottom of this plate. It'll say top on the reverse side. So you know it's the top. All right, so next part uh, is going to be the seal plate. You want to just, you know, visually inspect the seal plate, make, so, make sure there's no cracks. If so, you want to replace it. Uh, first thing you want to do is pop out this old uh, part of the shaft seal. I'm just going to take a, a flat head and just kind of pop it out from the back. Uh, this one's, this one was uh, glued in there, so it's, I have to get this out. So just make sure you clear out anything that's still in there. 
All right, so we got our cleaned out seal plate. Uh, we're gonna take the uh, white ceramic uh, part of the two-piece shaft seal, put it in here. Um, you don't wanna touch the face of the ceramic, so we're gonna use a cloth to push it in. There you go. And make sure the uh, white ceramic is facing out. Next step is gonna be putting the uh, seal plate back over the motor mounting plate. Uh, you can go ahead and remove this shaft protector and discard it, you don't need it. And again, there's a top and bottom to this uh, seal plate. The grooves are gonna be at the bottom to match up with the, uh, with the motor mounting plate. In the next steps, we're gonna be putting the impeller back onto the shaft. Uh, you'll notice that the old uh, spring portion of the shaft seal is still on the old impeller, you gotta remove that. And this is actually, this metal part here, this little sleeve is actually part of the old shaft seal. So this has to be removed. That's not part of the impeller. But you can just take a, uh, a flathead and kind of work that off. And this little rubber piece. All right, so we got the new spring portion of the shaft seal. We're going to put that on the, the shaft of the impeller. Um, you'll notice that there's a shiny side and a dull side to this spring portion. The shiny side is always going to mate up with the, uh, the, the smooth ceramic. Um, so we'll put this on the uh, impeller facing out so that it'll be able to touch the white ceramic. Okay, so you see the, the, shiny, uh, the shiny side is out. And we're going to put that on here. Before we do, we're going to have to stabilize the shaft of the motor. All right, uh, if you notice the back of the, uh, the V-green is a little different from the uh, traditional single speed. You have to use a, uh, a 5 16 Allen wrench in there to stabilize the shaft. So we'll just stick that in there and then spin the, uh, spin the shaft until, you can, until it's locked up. And then at that point, we can uh, thread the impeller back on. And it, it just has to be uh, hand tightened. You don't need to really crank it on there. It just needs to be snug, like you, you know, when you're installing like an oil uh, filter on your car. Just snug enough. It doesn't have. You don't have to crank it on. All right, we're gonna slide the impeller ring back over the impeller. The the wider side is gonna be out towards the strainer. It actually tells you on this uh, impeller ring out towards the strainer. All right, so the next, uh, next piece will be the diffuser. You can see the old uh, diffuser ring still on there. We're gonna discard that. We're, we're gonna, we are gonna put a new one on. All right, and you'll see here it says top. So that's gonna obviously go at the top of the, uh, the seal plate. All right, we're gonna put the, uh, the new uh, diffuser gasket on there. It's gonna, we're just gonna put a little bit of uh, silicone lubricant on it. And it doesn't have to be much, just a little pea-sized drop. Just enough to make it shiny. All right, the V-Green motor will come with these two plugs installed in the back. Uh, the one on the right here is for the high voltage, which can be your power coming into it. The one on the left is for an auxiliary line. Uh, either, you know, we're gonna use it to go to the V-Link, but if you had automation, you'd use that. Uh, if you're not using a V-Link or automation, you would just leave this one in. If it's loose, you want to make sure it's tight so water doesn't get in there. But we're going to go ahead and remove the high voltage one and, and put on our elbow.
right, so uh, now we have the motor installed, thanks to Rob. We're gonna move in to uh, programming the motor. The motor comes with a factory preset, but obviously we wanna do our own schedule. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna press step one. And on this side, you can see that it says duration uh, over these numbers, and that's how many hours it's gonna run for. So let's say we're gonna run it for four hours. You're gonna press step one. Then it's gonna take it over to speed, and you can see the RPM readings over there. Let's say, let's have it at 3,100. And, uh, and then to save that, you would just go to step two, and that saves step one. And we're gonna do the same thing for all of these. And then once you have step three, the next button push you do is gonna save, is gonna save step three. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, uh, let's say you wanna do an override. If you wanna, you know, for whatever reason, you wanna press override and have it run for, let's say two hours. And then you're gonna have it run at 3450, which is full bore and that'll do the full, full power of the motor. And that's just in case, let's say you wanna run the cleaner, if you have a suction side cleaner or something like that, it gives you a chance to, to run the motor and you don't have to mess with any of the uh, step one, one, two, or three. All right, so we got the V-Green installed. Uh, next thing, we're gonna install the uh, Century V-Link, the wireless motor interface. So we're just gonna unbox it, take a look at it. Um, basically, it comes with everything you'll need to install it, minus the tools. Um, just take a look here, you got your user manual, got the actual V-Link. And then you have all the, uh, the cables and the connectors that you'll need. All right, well, we finished uh, installing the V-Green and the V-Link. And uh, Dennis, how'd you think that went today? Do you think a normal uh, residential owner could do that? Yep, uh, look, went very good. Uh, you look at the uh, video, uh, pay attention to what's in the video, and maybe look at a couple things in the user's manual, and it ought to go very well for you. Yeah, and uh, so far, uh, with the uh, installation of the motor and looking at the V-Link, it looked like we should save a whole lot of money uh, coming in the next few months. Yeah, we were looking at the app and, and uh, before it was costing anywhere, depending on time of year, 50 to $70 to run the single speed pump per month. And the app's already telling us, this is you know December, but it's gonna be running $10 a month right now. Yeah. And so that, you might be looking at $20 a month in the summer, but that's still a heck of a savings. Yeah, so you know, we'll send you, send you the check. <laughs> uh, it'll be in the mail. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank Bye. you. Bye.